this is Dainty Tank. Thank you for joining me. This is Highway Blossoms Part 2. If you want to see Part 1 where I mumble through the first part of this because I was too tired to even think about anything. And I was too far away from the mark mic to actually make a difference. Uh, poke the toad around. <laughs> Look at the upper eye card area and you can see it there. So, yeah. It's from here on I'm going to be a lot closer to the mic and actually just enjoy myself. I hope that you enjoy it as well. Boom! Alright. So with that, last time we met our main protagonist, uh, a very, very gay girl named Amber, who is a mildly grumpy, driving a motorhome, thinking about her dad who also drove the motorhome maybe? There's a cassette tape that means something and came across this really cute girl in the middle of the desert who ran out of gas and was just on the side of the road. So, uh, <laughs> Amber picks her up, goes and gets gas because she forgot her phone and her wallet in her car. Marina is her name. Uh, that's when they hear about the miner's treasure. And the miner's treasure apparently is based on, uh, was it Forrest Flynn, I think? Forrest Flynn? Uh, a real treasure that was hidden in the New Mexico, Arizona, Sierra Nevada mountain space there. Uh, <laughs> and it's uh, really interesting. So they get back to the car and it's gone. So Amber says, eh, I don't need to be in California for a few years, for a week, a few weeks. So, might as well help you on getting to the first section. So, let's load. Here we go. Hey, so, <laughs> Marina has no idea where the first section of the miner's journey begins. So, let's go uh, read from here. Crusting brown stains and wrinkles engrave the photo. Some of the writing has been scratched out too, like someone made mistakes and couldn't erase them. I hate to admit it, but for something that's probably a sham, the thing looks pretty authentic. With bounty and satisfaction in hand, I am now home bo homeward bound. The perilous journey forthcoming. Forthcoming? Through my unrivaled intellect and unmatched ambition. Oh my goodness, are you a Slytherin? Is that what I'm learning? Also, forget about that author that happens to be a turf, so for, it doesn't matter. I have succeeded in accomplishing what many believed would no longer prove profitable. Of course, this only comes as a surprise to those around me, not myself. Self-confidence goes a long way there. I had traveled this way on the trail with many others from the Missouri Territory. But as my typical char uh, characteristic success grew, I could sense the envious stares amongst my so-called peers. Oh god, this sounds like a jerk. The danger eventually became so great that I wished to flee, but my companions left before I awoke. For what reason, you may ask? I do not know. It sounds like you were a jerk and they thought you were a jerk, so they just kind of like... Hey, how about we get up like an hour earlier and leave him? Yeah... I think that's what just happened there, bud. It is with this in mind that I have taken it upon myself to leave a note for one of my fellow prospectors and to borrow his stead, steed, so that I may one day return to settle with my family. So you left the note for one of the fellow people who left you and to borrow his steed. Okay, so you stole someone's car. Essentially, but ye old. Okay, hold on, no. But if this journey has taught me anything, so if I'm jealous, but I am no fool, I'm paralleled wit, I have chosen something, something, something. Yeah, I'm not reading all this crap. What should I- what, where should I actually start? Let's see, if he left California, lived in Missouri, and supposedly hit something in New Mexico, like Marina said, then what we're looking for is likely a later entry. 
Ah, here we are. Alas, I have reached the final point of my division in my travels. During my stay amongst the ruined sanctuary, the rogue native Lamasi has informed me of a landmark that was rich in the mythos of his people, considered sacred. He said that the chance of the gold being discovered would be very slim. He referred to it as a winged rock, a monument erected towards the sky. After my previous detour, I have finally arrived. It is with much disbelief, I must say. My friend, Lamasi, was right. It is not just a monument erected towards the sky. It is a mountain, almost as if the Lord himself had stuck up the earth amongst the stand. It is guarded by the trails of rocks around it, all branching from the mother rock. On this journey, I have encountered many different sights, dangers, and yes, even an occasional friend. As I look upon the mountain before me, I am reminded once more that there are things bigger and greater than I. Although I was not yet rid of this cough, my soul has been humbled and removed of fatigue. I can think of no better place to store that last of my gold, and I anxiously await the day I return. What does it say? The gist of it is that it's near a big rock and a bunch of little rocks. <laughs> You're right. That should narrow it down, right? Yep. Yeah, to the entire state of New Mexico. Marina gasps and lunged towards the journal. The muscles in her neck tensed and her eyes wide with panic. That can't be the only thing he mentioned. There has to be more. Whoa, so frustrated. I raise the journal high above me so she can't reach it, using my hand as I blockade against her head as she desperately tries to grasp for it. That's really cute. Sheesh, relax for a second. I actually have a pretty good idea of where it might be. She settles down, still Sith, with anxiety, nibbling on the tip of her thumb. Oh, well, that's gotta be really cute. I lower the book da back down and read over the entry one more time, just to make sure. There's a part where he calls it a winged rock. Assuming my years of reading travel guides and brochures weren't totally useless then I'm pretty sure that's a loose translation of what the Navajo used to call shiprock. Oh. There's a ship out in the desert? Whoa! <laughs> I peer over the journal. Marina's imagination is going bonkers, her eyes alight as she tries to wrap her head around such a novelty even existing. How long have you lived in New Mexico? Marina swells up with pride, only to deflate like a balloon before speaking, instead choosing to blow a misplaced strand of hair out of the way. Oh, my life. Oh. I sigh and slam the <laughs> journal shut. It's a small mountain near the border of New Mexico and Utah that's vaguely shaped like a ship. Oh, okay. That makes way more sense. Hmm. I'm surprised you haven't heard of it. Things a landmark. Yeah. Oh, Marina, there's gotta be a backstory here. But hey, at least I know now. You do. There you go. Shrugging, I put away the journal and smirk. Misplaced as it might be, her cheeriness is a good mix up from the norm. Do you think the treasure might be there? Don't know, but it's worth a shot. We don't have anything else to go on. Facts? Sure you don't want me to just take you home? Oh. Oh, that sad face. Marina hesitates for a moment, turning to the windshield as if to dodge the question with her eyes. No, I think I want to do this. You get it. All right, then. I put the car in drive and look ahead. The sun has set. The blue shade of dust rising up to take its place. I press down the gas. Marina turns to me and smiles. Let's hit the road. Get it. The sun has long since set and given away to darkness. Only my headlights remain, illuminating the road and silhouetting the small rock formations around us. 
I've been alternating between the old tape and new ones, immediately throwing on an old tape after finishing a new one and vice versa. I haven't had any complaints from Marina. She's been sitting at my side the entire time, softly hemming off key to the music. She seems to be the type to just accept things as they are, like with her card just being stolen and or that treasure. She seems awfully relaxed about things. Especially that treasure. And to make it worse, it's not just her. Apparently it's some phenomenon now. Goes to show how much I keep up with current events. But the whole thing smells like a scam. I bet somewhere all the big shots from that publishing house are gathered up in their corporate tower laughing at the idiots they've ripped off with that book. I'm even starting to sound like him. Music turns to static before the cassette is silenced by a loud click. I eject it and reach for his old tape again. Marina notices, takes the opportunity to break the long-held silence. So, do you like music a lot? Oh, um, yeah, I guess. I figured. You've been playing those tapes this entire time. She picks up one of the tapes on the center council and inspects it, going as far as to poke her pinky through one of the holes. Though, I'm not sure what you'd call this type of music. <laughs> yeah, I've just been playing whatever. Mostly jazz fusion and alt country. Throw in some new age crap in there for good measure. Ew, alt country. <laughs> Most of these are mixtapes I made when I was little. <laughs> Get it, Amber. Cool! Any names I'd recognize? She peeks at me through the holes in the cassette, wearing a wide, genuine smile. Probably not. <laughs> Aw, come on. Try me! Try her? Eh, why not? Maybe I'm not giving her enough credit. You know, Gabriel, Gertu, Weather Report, Donovan, Methany. Nope. Marina gives sage-like nods and grunts of understanding as I list off the names. You have no idea who any of them are, do you? No. Not a clue! Same. That's what I thought. Sorry. I usually listen to whatever's on the radio. I crack a slight smile. It's alright. I could see how it might be hard to get into. My gramps used to call it road trip music. <laughs> I still think it's nice, though. It's making you really happy. Oh, there you go. I was about to say, my happiest time is actually driving with music on. Love it. You think so? She taps her finger gently against my cheek. I pull away a little, but let her do it anyway. Yeah, why else would you be smiling? There you go. I've never really thought of whether it made me happy before but i do know it made him happy so that's good enough for me that's actually why i'm going to california you know for a music festival hmm. we've learned a thing a thing about amber the one for real where not far from palm springs cool palm springs like the actual Palm Springs? Oh, Marina. Don't know if there are any other Palm Springs in California. But yeah, they do it every year for a few weekends. Ooh. I went to my first concert a little before I graduated. How old are you, Marina? She rests her hand, head against the window, stares at the road ahead, her smile fading, but still there. Hmm. So you graduated, so I'm guessing graduated high school? Maybe? It was so much fun. An entire weekend of that sounds super awesome. Ugh. Nah, it ain't that cool. Marina flings her head away from the window and turns to me. Now she's staring at me like I'm crazy. How could you even say that? It's the coolest thing ever! I wouldn't even be able to wait. I'd want to see all the bands. Oh my goodness. Invite her along. She obviously has nowhere else to be in her entire life. Adopt Sheesh, this. relax. It's not like I'm taking it for granted. It's just that there's only one group I know I want to see so far. 
So wait, you're driving all the way to Palm Springs for a, a several weekend festival and you only know of one group you would want to see from that. I usually don't go unless there's multiple groups I want to see of something like that. That's right, his favorite group. Ah, gotcha. Just one? He was so excited when he got the tickets. Just one that I'm excited for. I'll watch a bunch, though. Releasing a long sigh, Marina eases back into her seat. It's tickets. With an S. So just adopt this girl. She obviously has nothing else to do in her life. Just adopt the wonderful darling sweetheart of an extrovert who's chosen you, my dear Amber, for some reason, and adopted your little introverted butt. And has pulled you into her own. So just hold on <laughs> and go with her. Oh, good. I was afraid you were going to head home after you saw your group. You crazy? I'd like to at least have a little fun before worrying about all the expenses I gotta deal with. Oh. Expenses? Uh, uh it's nothing. She gasps. Are you in debt? Is it college loans? My brother said those aren't fun to deal with at all. <laughs> Your brother's right. Got too comfortable. Should just keep my trap shut. Oh, come on, Amber. Open. Open sesame. Or did you just spend too much on your tick? That warning, I swerve off the side of the road and onto a rocky sand, cutting Marina off and nearly giving her a heart attack. Marina shoots me a worried glance, her face still pale. Oh my god! What was that? Are you okay? I pinch the bridge of my nose and my elbows on the wheel. Amber! Ooh. I've been driving all day. I'm a little tired. Where are we? A little outside Albuquerque, so we aren't too far now. We'll sleep here tonight and drive to Shiprock first thing in the morning. Oh. Oh, look at that beautiful night sky. Ah, oh, that's gorgeous. Killing the initian, I climb out of my seat and into the living quarters. Marina trails behind me. I yank open the bathroom's velcro latched cupboards. Inside is a folded stack of blanket, sheet, pillow, and my old gym clothes from school. I scoop them up and toss them to Marina. She scrambles to catch it, desperately bouncing them as <laughs> balancing them. As they lean out of her arms. Sorry about the clothes. I don't have any actual pajamas. You can sleep on the couch. It folds out into a bed. Oh, okay. All right then, see you in the morning. With that, I step into the back room and slam the sliding door before collapsing onto the oversized bed. Even in darkness, I can make out the pictures hanging on the wall. Once upon a time, they were generic, scenic pieces. Now they're photos. Photos of me and Gramps. Ah, My favorite one is... My favorite is the one of us in front of the museum for rock. Rock and roll, to be specific. Oh, that's adorable. Although horrifying to see kids with missing teeth, I'm gonna be honest. I was just a little pipsqueak back then, holding up an autograph vinyl seal uh, sleeve that was about the size of my head. He was by my side, squatting down and ruffling my hair as I gave the biggest smile I could, even with my missing teeth. I let a sigh and fixate on the ceiling's skylight, a small sliver of the moonlight shining through. It feels like an eternity since I've last laid down on this bed. I remember it like it, like being hugged by a cloud. Now it feels like concrete. Tiny creaks sound through the room next door, accompanied by Marina's little squeaks of determination as she struggles with the fold-out bed, until finally I hear, to, hear a loud thud. Uh. I can't help but smirk a bit. I should have warned her that it was heavy. The room over, the room over goes silent. I hope it didn't crush her. Luckily, I soon hear footsteps tiptoeing across the carpet. And then it, on the bathroom tile, 
They stop outside my door. Hey, are you awake? Yep. Her voice is weak, barely above a whisper. It's almost impossible to hear as if it's muffled through the door. I know I've said it a lot already, but I really mean it. Thanks, Amber. Good night. I continue to stay silent. In the dark, the ceiling looks like uh, Sorry, pop up. I continue to stay silent in the dark. The ceiling looks like it's constantly changing in size and dimension. Sometimes getting bigger and further away, other times getting closer and smaller. I look down through the crack under the door. I can see her shadow turning around to leave. The words slip out of my mouth before she can even take a first step. Night, kiddo. Ah, kiddo. There we go. Opening title screen. Just takes, you know, 45 minutes worth of gameplay to get there. <laughs> Most people imagine indie. Well, actually, it might be a good. S mm, no, let's keep going for a little bit longer. A little bit longer. More. A little bit more. Okay. We got time. Most people imagine Indian reservations are tucked away slices of heaven. Maybe some pocketed oasis, uh, vibrant greens and flowing water in what is otherwise a wasteland. Those people are wrong. The Navajo reservation is as sandy and barren as the rest of the desert, and at 22,475 miles, it's neither green nor fun-sized. Not that I hate it. The miles of faded highway road speed past me, blending together with the sand that stretches out to far off rig uh, rigid mountains. Like there's a rhythm to it all. Behind me, Marina is still stretched out in the fold out bed, cuddling the pillow, substitute for a blanket that's long since fallen off her bed. My old gym clothes are a little small for her, Sh the shorts only reaching halfway down her thighs. Oh my. But hey! I'm not complaining. Soon we're rolling into town, its jagged namesake peeking over the horizon. Shiprock. Town itself is this typical for the desert. Nothing fancy like a high rise, just a whole lot of plain shacks sitting on top of the gravel, painted worn browns and beiges. From behind me there's a slight there's a light, almost fluffy yawn. I wonder how that bundle of joy handles mornings. Morning. <laughs> there we go. Oh, hey. You're finally awake. Uh-huh. She yawns again and thumps back against the bed. Guess she's not a mor morning person. And there's still some coffee in the- Oh, wow! Is that shiprock? Oh my god, there it is. Ha-ha! <laughs> I take it back. Marina rushes behind me, grabs the back of the seat, her eyes sparkling. It's huge! I can't believe we can see it from so far away! On closer inspection, my clothes are way too tight for her. My poor t-shirt is being stretched to its limit. Of course, this doesn't seem to bother her at all. I don't know if I'm more embarrassed for myself or for her. Well, we have to get moving now, so go get dressed or whatever. Ah, uh, sure thing. Fair. Scamper. Sc oh, hold on. Whew. She scampers off to the back, finally giving me room to breathe as I make my way to the driver's seat. Until I accidentally glance at the rear view mirror. In the middle of the motorhome, Marina slips out of her pajamas and into her regular clothes. Jeez, the bathroom is right there. I mean, yeah, but you're gay. <laughs> it's fine. I adjust the mirror and try my hardest to stay focused on anything else I can look at. Fully dressed, Marina hops, uh, pops back up beside me and settles into the passenger seat. Desolate row continues until suddenly, as if out of nowhere, we're greeted by a line of cars, RVs, buses, and every other kind of vehicle under the, this blazing sun, all lumped together, stacked one on top of each other, side by side, and every one blasting their horns. What the? 
Uh-oh. Whoa, you think this is because of the treasure? Yeah. Grip my teeth and flop back in my seat. I can only pray that these are tourists. That was the only one dumb enough to humor the scam. We're soon assimilated into the traffic jam. Slowly, the motorhome inches forward. But when we finally reach the front, a whole new monster awaits us. Laid out on the dirt, barely in the shadow of the looming mountain, is a giant cluster that can only be described as such. Campers, tents, tarps, booths, you name it. Chaotic horde of people crowd around the entire unorganized mess. I cringe at the very sight of it. I'm in hell. Marina pushes her face against the window, in awe of sh the sheer insanity. I don't think I've seen this many people since the concert. Oh god, she's going to break from the overstimulation. Stimulation. Overstimulation. Oh, goodness words. A choir of horns serenade us from behind. Groaning, I pull forward and squeeze the motorhome into the nearest available space, stuffed tightly between everyone else. Backing out is going to be a real pain. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go find that treasure! Oh, dear. Marina sits up and nearly leaps out of the car by grab her wrist and pull her back into her seat. Just hold on a second. Her enthusiasm fades. Oh, that's right. You were only going to drop me off and leave. Yeah, I mean... Yes, but Amber, this is your chance. Allow the extrovert to adopt you and adopt her in return. Just just do it. Sorry, but I'm gonna stick around a bit longer. Huh? F for real? Get it. She starts sniffling. You're so nice to me, Amber. I, I think I might cry. Oh my goodness. Hold it in. We gotta think of a game plan first. There we go. Getting back to the practicality. Okay. <laughs> Marina returns to her usually ha usual happy-go-lucky self while I grimace at the chaos outside. If I suspend my disbelief and assume the treasure is real, where would I even start? We don't even have any equipment. I guess we may as well start by checking out the place. Fair. Alright. Well, this seems like a good place to stop for now while we're about to... I suspect this winged sh rock, ship rock. So, uh, I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you subscribe so you can continue on on this journey with me. I do think that this probably was a better recording than the last time. I apologize for being, one, uh, kind of out of it, and then two, not very clear with the actual... Sorry. Words, aphasia. Talking. Talking into the mic. I was bad about talking into the mic. There we go. I got it. I got there. Stick with me. So, subscribe so you can stick with me more. And I hope you are enjoying the series. Let me know what you think. And with that, I'll talk to you next time. Love you all. Bye!